all right so in this video let me explain you what is the effect of substrate concentration on an enzyme activity so what we are going to do now is so we'll have to understand like uh, what will be the concentration of enzymes in our body so at any given point in time please remember that our any enzyme you take an example of an enzyme and say you have a glucokinase hexokinase or something like that take an exam of uh, example of an enzyme and uh, that particular enzyme is always ex existing in certain concentration in a normal individual although the range will be there say suppose like an enzyme has 10 to 20 international unit or something so uh, that will be constant in every individual uh, unless there is any disease or something like that so that means we will have a constant amount of enzyme being expressed at all times so generally it doesn't change so that is why so that's a, one of the important thing that we need to remember to understand effect of substrate concentration on an enzyme activity so let's begin to understand that so uh, let's look at the uh, x-axis here so here is the x-axis and the x-axis is uh, substrate concentration uh, which is given in uh, mole per uh, liter and y axis so y axis it is written v1 that is the initial velocity of the reaction which is written in uh, moles per liter per second okay now uh, the thing is uh, we i as already told you we need to consider that we have a constant amount of enzyme at any given point in time so that's why as you can see there are uh, six enzymes mentioned here see there are six enzymes uh, mentioned in all these three uh, parts in the uh, basically in the in this particular figure so the six enzymes have got six active sites each enzyme has got an active site so with that understanding so let's uh, begin like what will happen if we give a lower or initial uh, concentration of a substrate say let's work in this particular concentration so your substrate concentration down here so just for easier understanding let me write it as like uh, two moles per liter four moles then we have six eight ten twelve and then uh, 14 16 18 and uh, so on and so forth so you can just go on writing like that so let's look at uh, lower substrate concentration so let's be within like four millimoles uh, four moles per liter there so under four moles per liter so let me mark that uh, here so we are in this particular uh, area here so uh, four moles per liter so that's the lower substrate concentration that means we have plenty of enzymes we have six enzymes but only two substrates in the example given here so there are two substrates but there are six enzymes that means we are working at low substrate concentration where enzymes are available plenty active sites are available plenty so this particular substrate can go and bind to any enzymes active site see this substrate here it can go and bind to any enzyme active site so we have six active sites available only two substrates so there is plenty of enzymes the only thing is you need to give substrate so substrate will go and bind to an enzyme active site and it will become product and the product is shown uh, as a reaction velocity curve so it's almost like a straight line right so basically what is going on here it is the velocity of the reaction is directly proportional to the substrate concentration as you can see see the velocity of the reaction is proportional to the substrate concentration as you go on increasing the substrate velocity of the reaction will increase so it is very proportionate so this kind of reactions we generally refer it as a first order kinetics so the first order kinetics it happens whenever we have a low substrate concentration and there are plenty of enzymes to work with so uh, let me write down here so the first order kinetics first order first order kinetics so first order kinetics it is velocity of the reaction is directly proportional to the substrate concentration and that's why the reaction velocity curve you see a straight line now let's see the second part of this particular figure so let's look at this part now now the second part of the figure here so as you can see uh, from the figure so we have six enzymes with the active sites filled with the substrate and there is one substrate still remaining so basically we are kind of 
uh, getting into like saturate these enzyme units okay so uh, six enzymes are there seven substrates so all six enzyme active sites are fill uh, uh, full full now until this substrate is coming out as a product until it is released as product so there is no place for the additional substrate to go and bind and that's why you can uh, see here so there is a, a plateauing of the curve basically there is a bending of this curve so it's kind of getting saturated now enzymes are getting saturated as you are increasing the substrate concentration beyond the number of enzymes that are available to take the substrate and make a product so because you are going on increasing the substrate concentration so enzymes are getting now saturated so now let's look at the third uh, part of this particular figure let me remove this part now so the third part of the figure as you can see so there are plenty substrate then the enzymes that are available as you can see there are only six enzymes are there but all six enzymes are like you no know, filled with the substrate but still like you no know, six more substrates are still waiting that means your enzyme is now kind of saturated so that means at any given point in time only six products can form because when this uh, substrate is converted to product so the product is released so that means only six products can be released from six enzymes when the six products are released so uh, six more uh, substrates will go and bind to the active site of an enzyme again six products will release six more will go and bind because you are keeping you are giving substrate concentration at we are keeping the substrate concentration at higher level okay so that means there is a saturation going on here and the velocity will remain constant as you can note from the figure here so the velocity once it reaches that plateau stage it just remains there this is a plateau stage of like that's the velocity that's the maximum velocity of an enzyme so at any given point in time this set of enzymes can only make six products because we have only six enzymes and we are providing substrate at high concentration so that is uh, basically we call this as a saturation kinetics and the saturation kinetics uh, is also it is referred as a zero order kinetics so the zero order kinetics it simply says that the velocity of the reaction is independent of substrate concentration so the zero order kinetics now so zero order this is zero order kinetics so zero order kinetics is also referred as saturation kinetics saturation saturation kinetics so what happens in saturation kinetics velocity of the reaction is independent of substrate concentration why because even if you go on increasing the substrate concentration right here you are not going to change the velocity reaction velocity curve here it is still like plateau only way that you can change the re reaction velocity curve is to increase the number of enzymes so if you increase number of enzymes like put more enzymes uh, so that it will take up more substrate that's the only way where uh, substrate can go and bind with the these additional enzymes and thereby you can increase the curve like this now it can go on it can go beyond that point unless you do that so there won't be any change in the velocity of the reaction so because enzyme has already reached uh, saturation so that particular point saturation kinetics there this point you take this as a v max so that's what is shown here look at this part this is referred as a v max so now take that v max and uh, bring it down next take half of that particular v max see this is the v max take half of the v max and then uh, bring that point and interpolate with the reaction velocity curve and bring it down to the x axis so wherever it meets on the x axis this particular point we refer it as km km is a michaelis constant so uh, let uh, let me explain you what exactly is the km uh, with the uh, figure here so uh, this is the y axis and the x axis x axis is substrate concentration uh, you can express in uh, moles per liter and the v1 is the initial velocity and the reaction velocity curve so this is the michaelis menten curve here and uh, take the v max denote the v max so this is the v max maximum velocity of the reaction and take half of the v max and interpolate that particular line and bring it down to the x axis wherever it meets on the x axis it is called as km 
so this is half of the v max this point is half of the v max i will write it as v max over 2 half of the v max and this point here this is the substrate concentration x axis say suppose this is say 1 uh, sorry 2 4 say 6 8 10 something like that so the km km is the substrate concentration this is the substrate concentration is the km at which it is reaching half of its maximum velocity as you can see it's half maximum velocity so that's the definition for km km is the substrate concentration at which enzyme reaches half the maximum velocity now we have certain parameters here we have initial velocity we have km we have substrate concentration and we we have v max so using all these parameters uh, scientists michaelis and menton michaelis and menton so they have derived equation referred as michaelis menton equation so what is this michaelis menton equation it simply says initial velocity equals to v max times substrate concentration over km plus substrate concentration this is what is the equation called michaelis menton equation so if you know uh, v max if you know substrate concentration if you know km if you know sub, uh, again substrate concentration you can calculate what is the initial velocity of the reaction and also note that the michaelis menton equation so can also be applied for not only for enzymes it can be applied for transporters so you can use michaelis menton equation for the velocity of the transport across the membrane use the same equation v max times substrate concentration km plus uh, substrate concentration so one of my uh, like now previous student has made a mnemonic on uh, michaelis menton equation and the mnemonic is uh, initial velocity equals uh, that's basically v max times substrate uh, over km plus uh, substrate uh, it is like uh, victoria victoria secret uh, keep the secret okay that means we have v here that is a v max times substrate concentration that is s yes, km times substrate concentration okay so uh, v max times sub, uh, substrate concentration over km plus substrate concentration not times sub, uh, substrate concentration i'm sorry so initial velocity equals v max times substrate concentration over km plus substrate concentration so this is how uh, the effect of substrate concentration will occur over uh, uh, the enzyme so that means in, in the lower substrate concentration enzymes will have the rate of reaction will be directly proportional to the substrate whereas whenever you saturate an enzyme with the substrate so the velocity basically takes a constant phase and it reaches a saturation i hope this video has helped you in understanding the concept see you in my next video till then take care